Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, my name is William. Uh, like 60 seconds about me. I'm a developer since 2007. Um, I'm working right now in Iben, in Berlin, but actually I'm Brazilian. Um, yeah, as a Brazilian, I like uh, I'm got crazy about football and Formula One and racing stuff. Um, yeah, I like to call myself not a software engineer, but a CSS tweaker and a JavaScript uh, formatter. Uh, and that's it. Um, I'm about to show you um, now a presentation. I know, like, you just have a lunch, and sometimes, like, after lunch, we, we get a little sleep. But I ask you to bear with me. Um, I will try to chew a lot of all of this information. We will have a lot of code uh, happening here now. And I hope uh, we can learn something in the next 35-ish minutes. Um, but first, a uh, small disclaimer. Um, the proposal I'm about to show here are under construction. Um, the main intention here is to help you to understand um, the use case of those features and, um, and show you um, Put your some uh, awareness about uh, the huge amount of work that the the TC Turn Nine committee is doing to um, get some shaping on the syntax and semantics of the uh, ne next cool things that may or may not come to JavaScript. Um, and then, if we we'll have any concerns or um, uh, if you want to show um, uh, your support, please. Go to this link, uh, uh, they list all the proposals there. Go to the um, proposal like most, put a star there. If I have some concern, um, uh, open issue, or if I have a, be a better idea, like the, um, the, um, the process is open in, and it's for, for us, for you. So please um, participate on this. So that said, uh, let's start. So this is our presentation, Back to the Future of JavaScript. Um, I'd like to start my presentation um, ask you um, a tricky question. What is this? Um, in ECMAScript, this has different syntax and, and semantics uh, from the other uh, programming language, um, where most often this uh, relates to the lexical scope. I'll explain. So, uh, in the global scope, this refers to the uh, global object. So, and the browser will be the window, and web work will be self, and Node.js will be model.export. Um, but you may ask me, yeah, so what about in, inside the function? How does it look like? Well, <laughs> it depends. Uh, it depends how the function is called. So I'll show some examples to you. So in this case, um, inside a, um, a function that this uh, start to have a, um, um, an interesting behavior, let's say, and because it relies on how the function is called. So in this case, um, the, this will return uh, the global object both for um, browser and Node.js. No, no Note that in Node.js is not Node.export anymore, just the global object. And then um, when you um, use a new operator, uh, the new operator, among the other things, they, um, it creates, a, um, it bounds a, 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 the value of the new created uh, element to, to this. So in this, time, uh, in this example here, what we will see is the um, um, console log of bar bus. Oh, the contract's not, the contract is not so good, sorry. Um, but this is like a, um, um, a mistake that I, I did a lot when I was starting coding. When I uh, assigned something to this inside the function and I thought that would stay inside the, that function Turns out that I assigned something to the global uh, object just because I forgot to initialize the function with new. 
So this is why. And then we have um, um, another user case with stricture mode. Um, so when you have a function uh, in stricture mode, um, the this doesn't carry any um, explicitly, implicitly, any value from, from the outer scope. You should set it. And it defaults to undefined. So this is named here will um, console undefined. So I can show you some uh, examples about how to um, set uh, the value of this inside a uh, function. So you have these three first um, on the function prototype chain, the call and apply, they are kind of similar, just the parameters uh, that you pass is different. The function uh, prototype bind, um, it returns um, a new function permanently bind to the, to the first context, well, the first parameter, which is the, the context. And then we have the new operator that we just uh, spoke about. And whenever you assign this function to, um, as an object member, so it carries the, the outer object out as this. So here's a little example. Uh, um, so the first foo uh, returns a find. The second one uh, returns like a, a full function as a member. Um, the third one is object. The fourth one and, and so on. It's window because I'm buying the global um, global object to the to the function. So um, to understand the, uh, understand the value of this could be tricky, um, but we can make. Uh, um, we can make this to be a little more predictable by using uh, function uh, bind and error functions. So the bind method, uh, bind uh, as I said, it binds uh, permanently, the, um, returns a new function that it's bound permanently to the first parameter, which is the context. And the error function works a little bit different. It doesn't, uh, uh, creates a, a, a new context. It just carries the the lex code is from the outer scope. So to make this a little more understandable, there is a code snippet here. Um, I create this meowct component, um, which sets a property called um, poll, and you you have um, uh, a button assigned to it, and then there is a, another method called meow which is just console log the, the, the property poll. But then there is a problem there. Um, whenever I, uh, I'm like on the line 15, I'm, uh, I'm adding an event list in there. And when uh, we, we click the button, uh, when you call the function inside the event, um, the target uh, is bound to the function. So uh, when I console log this.poll, actually this is the button, not the, the, the class. So that's why we see undefined because the button doesn't have a um, um, parameter called Paul. So to try to fix this, this is like um, another snip, snip using the, um, the um, uh, function bind and then um, using our own function. This will look like this. Um, so Although um, arrow function can solve the majority of use case that we need to bind explicitly the, the these to the function, um, we still have two use case that um, explicitly bind is needed. Um, the first one is um, on this snip. Uh, let's suppose on the line two, I'm creating a new object that uh, doesn't extend the um, the object prototype, but then I want to check if X um, is part of that object using uh, the method has own property. Uh, so on the line four, you can see that uh, it will return a uh, type error because I'm not uh, extending this object from the um, object prototype. So to do that, on um, the line one, I'm um, extracting this function and try to use this on the line six. And as you can see, 
the way we are using this is, um, let's say, it's not so geometric, so it's hard to understand, but it works. And the second example is the the way uh, we showed before on the on on the cat or oh, milk component when we want to um, bind the uh, the um, the class or the context to the to the event. So these are the uh, two um, base case for the first proposal I want to show you. Bind operator. <laughs> so um, bind operator comes with two syntax right now. Uh, the uh, unary syntax and the binary syntax. So um, they, they are the base use case for, uh, they are intended to cover those uh, use case. Um, the unary syntax form, um, uh, this operator, it creates, it bounds um, the base um, reference to the, as a GIS. Uh, to the to the, the the function the method you're calling, and most interesting uh, the uh, binary syntax, it binds the left uh, side as a uh, this context to the right side. So the previous um, uh, example looks more, uh, let's say, easier to understand. Um, the cool aspect of binary operator is the fact that it opens a new opportunity to, for creating virtual methods, uh, as you can see uh, in this example here, um, or in this implementation uh, on RxJS 5, I think, yes? Or even on um, jQuery-like library. It's super cool because um, the developer sometimes doesn't need to download the whole library just to use small um, uh, stuff, and it makes it easier to extend uh, to extend uh, the um, the, um, the framework without uh, extending the prototype chain. So, let's pray to the gods of demo. So, change, change, change. I will I will start by writing function. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, there we go. So let's start by use add. And then let's do some math because math, I think, it's easier to understand. Um, so then we have add. Minus times and div. Um, Get out of here. Minus is this one. Times is this one. Div is this one, right? Yes. Yay, so far so good. So I have number one here, and then this, oh, oops, German keyboard. Uh, this one, yeah, found. Then I'll go. At two, let's see how it goes. Oh, nice. And then let's do times four. Oh, oops. Twelve. Nice. It works, right? So this is how it could look like. But then uh, I could do something further, like const, um, 
to fix it. So this is sign from number dot prototype. Yes, this one. And then this is like how it looks when you try to compose your, your custom functions with uh, the um, native one, let's say. Uh, to fix it, and then, yeah, three, there you go. Nice, isn't it? Can you see there, 12.000? Yeah, nice. Come on, it worked, yay! <laughs> Okay, uh, just one more. So, I this first function I I I didn't come up with that one. I copied from Stack Overflow. Um, so, we could do something like this. Uh, let's do better, just for the sake of time. Let's open the this one. Yay! So, uh, I'm doing the same here. Like I have three functions that I create, like capitalize, double say, and exclamation. And then I'm using the, I'm extracting the the train and the pad end from from uh, string prototype. Oh, once again, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I'm extracting the the train and pad end from from string prototype, and then I have this fancy stuff here, and I can show you that this works. Yes, you have the first parameter here. If I increase the padding to 50, you see that you have more space in there. Yay. Um, okay, that is a problem, this. Uh, let's suppose that I, um, let's, uh, let's remove these functions here. Oops. So, uh, so I have a hello world here without any uh, space. Uh, but then, not this one. I don't want to use this one. I want to use this one. The problem is, if this one is a narrow function, This uh, wouldn't work because, oops. Uh, as I told you, the um, um, the problem is the, um, the arrow function doesn't carry the. You cannot bind this to the arrow function because the arrow function doesn't carry the this. Like it just takes the this from the uh, outer scope, which is. The global scope here, and this global scope doesn't have a. Um, in this case, yeah, doesn't have. I don't know. It should be. It should uh, on the browser. It should be point to to window. Since window doesn't have replace, uh, this wouldn't work. Yes. Mouse. Okay. So we just spoke about the benefits of having um, a virtual method uh, for composition, uh, but with bind operator, I need to rely on this to be bound in, our, uh, in my function. Um, but sometimes, like as I, as I showed you, well, we don't want to have uh, we don't want to rely on, on this to be bound. So to compose some kind of functionalities in, in, a, um, in a streamline of functions. So, um, before I introduce our, the next proposal, I want to dig more deep in, into this user case. So, let's suppose we have a manager, and uh, this manager asks us to create a function that sanitizes an input value, and then um, and takes all the, uh, the digits numbers and, and transform into uh, its uh, text, uh, textual uh, representation. So. Uh, usually, this is, would be the piece of code we will do in order to make it readable, and because of that, we end up with a lot of these um, uh, intermediary uh, variables. So, 
it's it looks a little uh, verbose because we are just using this variable just to carry the the the, the value to the next one. Uh, but someone can say, yeah, I can remove all those variables, right? We can do better. We can do like this. Uh, it's not so nice because uh, the we keep. Uh, it, it's not natural the way uh, the data flow in the, the the way we read the code because the data, the, in this case, the data flow from the inner to the outer, and so it looks weird to to follow up on this. Um, so how can we solve this use case? This is the um, perfect hook for the next proposal, which is. Pipeline operator. <laughs> so, um, pipeline operator is a syntax sugar for those who use case. Uh, it creates a streamline of uh, a streamlined chain of functions uh, in a readable and functional manner. Uh, it's backwards compatible. I will show you how, and provides an alternative for uh, extended building uh, prototypes. So. Um, Getting this one as a, uh, the base use case that we showed before, we can rewrite this in this way. So as you can see on the first line, um, um, we can call this the topic of the next one. So you, you put the value as a, um, um, a topic for the next step, and the result of the next step will be the topic for the uh, following step, and so on. But then at the end, this, could, uh, this will be the sugar to this code here. So uh, we don't have those variables, but we can still read in a um, better uh, way. So, but what if my chain function needs to accept more than one parameter, right? Because uh, that example is just uh, receiving just one. So let's suppose that uh, the textualized uh, number um, function receives a second parameter, which is the white list of the numbers that should be textualized. And our manager asks us to just textualize zeros and ones. How can we do this on a pipeline chain? So it turns out on a minimal proposal, you can do this by using an arrow function. But um, to, to be uh, syntax complaint, uh, compliant, you have to use um, parentheses to wrap your arrow function. Um, but what if my sanitized function process the text in the server side? So we can use a wait for that, right? Uh, but this line is tricky on the minimal proposal because we don't know if this the sugar to this one, which is you await for the sanitized function given the parameter, or if you await for the sanitized, func uh, sanitized function, and then it returns a function that then you apply the, the value from the previous step. So, yeah, uh, it seems that the minimal proposal uh, still have some um, corner case that's not uh, being addressed. So. To show you how the, the C39 is planning to uh, address those issues, I want to show you the two competing proposals. Uh, the first one, smart pipeline. Um, uh, the smart pipeline proposal um, of that, that previous example uh, has two use cases. Uh, whenever um, you need to use um, parentheses, or, or square brackets, we use the topic style, which has this sharp as a token, which um, points to the topic of the previous step. And whenever we don't need anything of this, because the, the function is just straightforward one parameter, uh, you can use the bare style, which is in the line four. So just to recap, um, Two types, bear, uh, bear style, topic style. Whenever you need parentheses and, and square brackets, use topic style. And uh, the sharp token, it's, it's not fine. It's subject to, to change. Um, so 
if you use a, a, a curly function, uh, you need to use the, um, the, the, top, the, the topic style, otherwise you will have the, um, a syntax error because you are using parentheses. So then we have the second, uh, the second uh, competing proposal, which is... Here comes a new challenger! Uh, F-sharp uh, F pipeline proposal. Um, it's a simpler proposal than the, the smart pipeline. Uh, it, it just extends the minimal proposal with a wait step. So the, the wait step just um, await for the resolution of the previous step, so then it, you can pass it forward to the next one. Um, this proposal is on stage one. So demo time. So let's take this same code here and let's see how this could look like using pipeline. See right. Let me so um, we can come here and just put a pipe here, and then as yes. still works. Just remove this. And then exclamation. Ah, yeah. Exclamation. This could be like this, and this double say German keyboard. I hate you. Okay, we just remove the the column to the pipe but it's not working yet because we don't have this here, right? We have to, oops, there is, there is a mistake. Interrupt this one. Ooh, is this what I think it is? This sound? Am my time over? Okay, nice. Uh, so, so here I receive an S, and then I do S dot replace, and then here need to have an S as well, S here, oh, <laughs> S everywhere. So instead of using uh, these, I receive a parameter, and then I work on this parameter, right? Yeah, it should work. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, it works. <laughs> so, just to show you that um, actually is kind of the same um, um, semantics behind, like uh, intent, they tend to do the same, but in different ways, right? So, uh, when we were discussing popular operator, we saw um, this example um, on the um, smart pipelines with this uh, step 
that we have a token which relies or oh, um, refers to the um, previous step. Um, we, keep, we could use um, um, partial application for that, but then I need to um, an, uh, explain your first what is partial application. So partial application refers to a process of given function of uh, any arity. Uh, it returns another function with a smaller arity. So arity um, um, refers to the number of the parameters that a, a specific function takes. So we can assess the arity of a function by using uh, the property length of the function. Um, so I have this small example there, uh, which is uh, just a function that say hi and they receive three parameters and then just log them. Um, but uh, if for any reason I have to, I have only the two first, two first parameters beforehand um, and the third one is only available by resolving a promise. How can we do that? Like usually um, we do something like this. We uh, assign um, the values to, the, to this variable. Then once the, 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 the get, get location returns something, and we just log then, right? But we can uh, achieve a partial application right now in JavaScript by using um, function.prototype.bind. Um, Sometimes we, we forget because the main use case for bind is just to bind a context, but we forget that the uh, bind receive uh, more uh, parameters. And then uh, from the second parameter on is the, you can bind the, the, uh, the, pro, uh, the arguments to that, to that function. So that uh, previous uh, snip could be solved like this one. So we bind the uh, hello, uh, and Maria to the, the function returns a new function that just expect the last parameter and then we can call uh, as in the line five. Um, but there is a problem there because if we need to have, um, um, if we need to have just the first and the, uh, and the last parameter, um, we cannot jump the second one using bind because bind only binds the, 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 the arguments in order from the left to right. So I can just bind like the, the first, the second, and the third one if I want, but not the first, jump in the second and do the third one. But someone can ask me, yeah, what about curving? Like we can use curry for that, right? Um, although we, we can achieve uh, the same result as partial application using curry, curry is not equals to partial application. Uh, curry uh, is a function that given a function with uh, arit n, it returns a function which has the arit n minus one. So this is a way to do curry right now if you want to do um, using arrow functions. Um, yeah, but still uh, looks a uh, little verbose because uh, if I want to change the order, um, I need to create um, uh, another function that uh, uh, returns, returns the, this parameters in different order. And we can use uh, error functions as well. Um, so you can, uh, as you can see, there, is a, there are a lot, a lot of ways to achieve partial application in, Java, in JavaScript, but uh, none of them in a standardized way. So that side, I want to present to you the last uh, um, proposal of this talk. Partial application. So, um, partial application proposal creates uh, two new tokens uh, to be placed inside a function call, which allows us to partially apply arguments to a an, specific function. So, this is how uh, it works. Um, whenever you create a, a partial application, you just bound the fixing parameters to, the, uh, to that function. And then you have this uh, uh, question mark token uh, to, let's say, postpone the, the, the call with that uh, specific parameter. Uh, it's nice because it's easier to um, bound uh, arbitrary parameters and um, it's easier to the, to the developer to figure out whether that call uh, how many parameters it's missing, and uh, whether the next call uh, we call the function or not. 
wait, there is more. Um, so uh, at the beginning, I showed this initial example with the template, uh, template string uh, that builds, uh, like just receive an, uh, uh, the, the arguments and build this into the string. But it, turn us, it turns out that if I use a partial application inside the template strings, it returns a function that I can call with the missing parameters. So um, there is one last thing. Um, we can use the um, spread uh, token, uh, like ellipsis token, uh, to spread the unbound parameter. It's useful when you want just to bound the first and or the, only the last parameter. Um, I can show you just on, on, on a, quick, a quick example here. Um, so I have this function. Um, uh, which returns the number uh, greater ma uh, uh, max greater than zero. So if I, uh, I call this function uh, with only numbers uh, below zero, we return zeros, otherwise I just return the maximum one. So this is the way we can do this right now. And using this uh, ellipsis token, we could do like this. Um, this is not, this is not uh, part of the, the minimal proposal right now, but this could be extended once the, the, the partial application minimal proposal got landed to JavaScript. So I start this conversation on the partial application saying that this could be um, a good use case for, the, um, for extended uh, this use case here. Uh, on the line four, when you have the uh, this textualized uh, numbers, that receives an error function that is like, it's kind of verbose with a lot of parentheses there. So uh, using um, the partial application with pipeline, even uh, the, the minimal one, the minimal proposal, you can do like this. Um, so um, that said, should we all use this in production? Okay, as you can see, um, there are a lot of aspects uh, or missing pieces, losing parts of this proposal that should be settled. Um, the, ad uh, the adoption of one proposal could reshape or remove complete completely the other one. So um, I would answer for this question, not yet, right? Um, because uh, partial applications in stage one. Um, pipeline operator as well, and bind operator is just a strong on stage zero. So, uh, if you want to talk to me, these are my links, email. I wrote um, a little deeper article in Smash Magazine uh, talking about the bind, op uh, bind operator. You can check that out. I plan to do the same to the other uh, two proposals. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.